All right, you're good to go. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you, Cody. Welcome everyone uh, to another land use and waterfront meeting. My name is Adam Hartke. I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, today is October 26, 2020. Um, and it is now 6.33. Uh, tonight we are joined by Assistant District Manager, Cody Osterman. Uh, members of the public, you can raise your hand at any for any questions or comments that you have through the Q&A feature of Zoom. If there is time following the committee's discussion, we will field committees from the public. All right, um, Ann Seligman has volunteered to take minutes tonight. Thank you very much, Ann. Um, I'd like to extend a special thank you to Jim Collins for taking last month's uh, minutes. He rewatched the feed. Good. All right. Uh, he rewatched the committee meeting uh, via YouTube, um, so he's helping to pad our CB6 YouTube stats, making us, you know, semi-influencers, speaking of Instagram. So, but again, in all seriousness, thank you very much, Jim, and thank you very much, Ann. All right. With that said, we're going to go ahead and take attendance. Cody, will you please start the roll call? Oh, all right. Committee members, so... Uh call your name, you can unmute yourselves and, and say present. Jim Collins, has Jim joined yet? I didn't see him. Jim? Thank you. Adam Hartke? Here. Sandy McKee? Present. Wells Magali? Present. Gene Santoro? I saw him just a minute ago, I'll find him. Yes, let us, I'm here. Let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Shire. Present. Ann Seligman. Here. Lou Sapersky. Here. Sandra Sherrod. Present. Letty Simon. Here. And Kathy Thompson. Here. Great. You've got 10 members, which is a quorum. Uh, Kavitha, I counted as excused. Absolutely. Um, okay. And Larry, uh, excellent background, by the way. Uh, no problem. The photo I shot, I can't remember, it was about a year ago. Excellent. All right, so let's roll into the uh, the business of the agenda. Uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office and appears on the screen before you. There is no objection. We will adopt the, amend the agenda as stated. Members of the committee, if you obje object to adopting the agenda, you may raise your hand via Zoom. Okay, uh, seeing no objections. Uh, uh, the, uh, the agenda is adopted this evening. The minutes from the September 29th meeting were distributed this afternoon by Cody. Um, if there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes as drafted. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting the minutes, you may raise your hand through the Zoom function. Okay, seeing no hands, uh, the, we'll, we'll adopt the uh, minutes from the 29th, the, excuse me, from September 29th. Okay, um, so those of you, those of us, who, those of you who have joined us for previous Zoom meetings, which last month, uh, Cody, correct me if I'm wrong, was a fair, was a fair amount. Um, uh, we have, to, you're well aware of the ground rules, but for those who are new, new and joining us for the first time or haven't been with us for a while, uh, we just want to set set the rules via for our Zoom platform. Uh, number one, no one may speak until the floor is until you are granted the floor. Committee meter, committee members, if you have a question about committee business or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand uh, in Zoom. If you click through the participants icon, the participants panel should appear, and you should find the raise hand function here. Uh, if you still have technical difficulties, uh, ask Cody, and Cody will help you. Okay, um, the chat function, uh, please do not use the chat function. Uh, this is, uh, no, no, <laughs> please please just don't use the chat function. Use the Q&A all you'd like, but please don't use the chat function. Uh, when a committee member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you and you can unmute yourself so that you may speak. Uh, we are required by executive order to create a verbatim transcript of the meeting. So please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. Okay, with that said, let's jump into tonight's agenda. The first item on the agenda is Epsom Downs Incorporated is requesting an extension of term of a previously granted variance for the continued operation of a eating and drinking establishment, the townhouse at 234 East 58th Street, um, which is an R8 zoning district. 
All right. Um, would the representative uh, from Epson Downs uh, like to begin their presentation? We've got Fred. Hold on. Okay. So Fred, you need to unmute yourself. Oh, he's, he's, can, you can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. 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 So, uh, good evening. My name is Fred Becker. I'm the attorney for Epson Downs. This is an application for an extension of a variance that allowed an eating and drinking establishment at the subject location on the south side of 40 seconds of East 58th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Uh, what you have here is a situation where it is an R8 zone, despite the fact that almost every single use on that block is commercial. A variance was granted back in 1984. It has been renewed since that time every 15 or every 10 years. It most recently uh, expired in July of this year. We extended the application. We filed an extension of the application timely. Uh, the townhouse bar is a long established gay bar. Uh, it is of quiet nature. Uh, I don't believe there are any complaints, or at least I am not aware of any. Uh, our request is just to continue the uh, facility and the operation as we have been doing for the last 10 years with no changes to the uh, floor plan, to the hours of operation or anything else. And hopefully we'll be open again one day. And that's it. We're requesting another 10 year term, by the way. Okay. Presentation finished. I'm sorry. Presentation finished. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, does anyone from the committee have any questions? I just have one quick question. I just wanted to confirm uh, that we have not received any complaints from this location, either directly through the board office or through 311. I don't know if, if Cody or someone is able to tell us if yeah, you know, that's we, okay. We've had no uh, no complaints about this establishment uh, previously, e either in either way that you've suggested, 311 or uh, direct. Uh, Adam, it looks like uh, Lou is uh, asking for the floor. Uh, actually, Ann had, her, Ann had her hand raised in the in the platform. I'm sorry, I skipped, I skipped over her. So do Ann then Lou. Uh, uh, okay, um, you know, um, Sandro kind of asked one of my questions, whether just to confirm there are no, no questions. Um, I have to say, I, I looked you guys up online um, first, you know, before the meeting, and I see you get very good reviews on Google Maps, which is nice, but it has zero presence on Yelp. Like, they don't, they know you exist, and I, I, that was just a little bit of a red flag to me, so... Um, I unfortunately can't speak to that. I mean, I don't know why. Uh, there, the there's is, no reason, like there's no change in. The ownership and operation has been the same for the past 35 years, basically. The owner of the building has been the same all along. I guess it's just everyone knows it's there and that's the way it is. Uh, Lou. Move a resolution of no objection to the to, to the uh, application. Second that. Excellent. Um, all those in favor? Adam, do you want to you want to do it by roll call or? I'm I'm fine just doing a voice vote. Um, I okay. guess can we just do any objections? Raise your hand via the chat function. Or just say if if you have an objection, like the way you did. Right. for agenda and stuff. Okay, um, so if you have any objections, please raise them in the, please raise your hand via the Zoom bar. Um, okay, um, seeing, seeing none, this uh, resolution passes. Um, who would like to author this resolution? I'll be happy to. Sandro, thank you. Raise your hand in real life. <laughs> and, and what was the count on that on that rezo? I know it's unanimous or Cody. Cody, can you fill that in? Can, if I just say unanimous in the minutes? Mm -hmm. We've got 10 members and uh, no one no one okay, cool. demonstrated Thanks. any uh, opposition. You'll keep me honest on this. Excellent. 
Thanks. I tried to be efficient with that, but I think actually we spent just as much time outside of the roll call. So, you know, <laughs> see what we, do what we can do. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Fred, uh, for your presentation. Um, and uh, thank you. I look forward to authoring this resolution in support. Okay. Thank you to everyone. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye. Okay. With that said, let's move to item number two, which is the standing item in our committee, which is an update on the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. Okay. I believe there's a presentation that they'll be the team will be sharing with us. Yeah, Adam, I'm going to share my screen, so I'm just doing that right now. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Hi, Adam. Hi, everybody. This is Q Amiri from DDC Coastal Resiliency Unit. Um, while Desiree pulls up the presentation, I'll kick us off here. We are approaching our uh, construction phase for this uh, part of the project pretty soon, and we wanted to give you folks an uh, uh, update here tonight. Uh, we don't have too many details as of yet uh, still because the contractor is still Sp uh, submitting their uh, schedule and all their documents and everything that we, we need to review, but wanted to give you um, the information that we have available. And uh, we'll come back obviously next month with a lot more details uh, to be able to answer a lot more questions. So for tonight, uh, we have a couple updates on the pre-construction phase that, that's uh, almost behind us now for this particular area and um, what's next for construction phase. And my colleagues um, from our HNTV Lero team, John Lynch and Desiree Gazzo will, will walk us through that. And a couple of uh, overall reminders uh, sprinkled throughout this presentation. So with that, John, um, I'll hand it off to you and you can uh, walk us through what's what's next. Okay, sure. <clears throat> My name is John Lynch. I'm the project manager for HNTV Lero, assisting DDC in the administration of the construction for these four projects we're looking at here. Uh, so we have about 15 slides. Uh, I'll speak first, then Desiree uh, to community engagement, and then we're going to introduce our uh, our uh, community uh, construction liaison. So shouldn't take too long. Uh, most of you are familiar with the, the four projects. Uh, right now, we're just about to enter construction on the first project, PA2 in the north from 15th Street to 25th Street. Um, and then we have the PA1, which is the Big East River Park further south. Uh, that's uh, going to take bids in no early November. So then it's got to go through uh, this uh, process. I'm going to walk us through a little bit. And then parallel conveyance, we anticipate that uh, going out on the street for bids and then uh, being awarded and uh, starting in the spring. Um, we can go to the next slide. So just uh, we we're, we're a lot farther along than we were uh, some months back. Uh, so for PA2, uh, also called San Res M2, it's, they're interchangeable. Uh, from 15th Street to 25th Street, we uh, have an NTP date for this. That's going to be November 16th. So right now, uh, the contractor selected and they've started putting in uh, their submittals, things like their baseline schedule, their site safety plan, um, anything that we can review so that we hit the ground running uh, on November 16th. Can go to the next slide. So the first areas to be worked in would be Asser Levy Park and the Solar One area. Asser Levy, because we're allowing them into one of the three parks at a time um, with some overlap. And Asser Levy is the, the first one that will be uh, worked on. And then we move to Stuyvesant Cove, which will be in, done in two phases. So the whole park isn't out of service at once. And then down to Murphy Brothers Playground. Uh, the reason the Solar One area gets worked on first uh, is because they were planning to construct a building there. We wanted to get the heavy construction of a flood wall out of the way before they uh, construct a new facility in that site. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. Great. Quick update on PA1 or San Res M1. That's the big park to the south from uh, Montgomery up to 15th, 14th Street. Uh, so this one, as I said before, we're, uh, we've got, we're taking the bids uh, in early November. And so then we'll move into the uh, contract registration phase uh, and then it gets awarded and then notice to proceed. So that uh, should be by the end of the year, early 2021. We can go to the next slide. 
So yeah, the thing we want to note on this slide is that the park's going to remain open for all 2020. Uh, and then obviously when it gets done, it's done in phases so that at least um, about half the park is open at all times for the public to use. So I'm going to take over from John here. So just a reminder, we presented this at the last presentation, um, but there is a community outreach process. Um, again, it's been elected official, then the community boards and the CAG, the advisory group. Then we'll have a series of public notifications um, and then just ongoing updates here at the community board meetings and the CAG meeting. All presentations that we present at community board meetings and CAG meetings, and then any future presentations to the public are posted on the new um, website. The new website is the same address as the old website, um, and it is here. And then there's a link again at the end, uh, at the end, or you could Google New York City DDC ESCR for ESCR. So I'm very happy to announce our new CCL for PA2, Nadine Harris. And Nadine, if you wanna take yourself off of mute, um, you could say a few words. Um, just to remind everybody, the community construction liaison um, is the presence in the community. She'll be the boots on the ground. Uh, we will work through the COVID restrictions that we have right now, but Nadine will be um, at all of the community board meetings and she will be the, the face behind the, um, the web-based public inquiry tool from the, from the website from moving forward. Uh, so Nadine, if you wanna introduce yourself, the floor is yours. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nadine Harris. I am uh, the liaison, as Desira mentioned. I have been, uh, a liaison for 16 years, going on 17 on several different projects throughout the five boroughs of New York City. Um, I understand the project is very, uh, it's a, it, it will be a challenging project, but we are, we are all gonna work together to make it happen <laughs> in, a, in a safely manner. So again, uh, I will be on site physically, 20, uh, anytime you need me, you can always reach me via email, phone, and I will be there to answer most of your questions uh, with uh, the construction team, the contractor, and the resident engineer as a whole. So I will pass that on to back to Desiree, unless anybody has any questions for me. Thanks, Nadine. And I think mm -hmm. we'll take questions at the end. So if anybody has any questions, just hold them, hold them okay. for a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, a little update on our Section 3 and MWBE resources. We have updated this page um, on the website. Uh, tomorrow evening is part three of the HNTB Partners webinar, um, Create a Compelling RFP Narrative. Uh, the registration link is here. And again, it is on the website. Again, this is just a very general overview of the community engagement strategy. It has a general timeline of the projects as we anticipate them. Um, and then the other kind of items that we have mentioned, which are progressing forward and will so especially as PA2 kind of picks up here in the next month. Um, I just wanted to note that we do have a community advisory group meeting um, next, well, on November 5th is the next one, if anyone is interested in knowing when that is. And for more information, again, you could visit us at the new website um, or the revised website, which is www.nyc.gov uh, forward slash esker. And that is the close of our presentation today. Like Q said, um, at next month's presentation, we will have more information on PA2. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all. And welcome, Nadine. Um, we look forward to seeing you in future meetings. So thank you. Um, thank you my, uh, I guess my initial my initial question is, um, so with updates in the next meeting regarding PA2, uh, do we expect to hear more about some of the potential mitigation efforts um, for once construction starts to begin in, in, in full in 2021? 
Yeah, this is John. Are you talking about like environmental mitigation? Like, no, like I'm sorry. Uh, mitigation in so much that like when the park is closed, um, other other aspects are, are basically, I think, uh, in previous resolutions, uh, CB, our, this committee and, and, the, um, and the board put forth a host of different ideas and other sorts of things for uh, mitigations for when the park is actually closed. Um, I know our, our section is a little bit further down the road, but we still have these sorts of things are still sort of outstanding. So we're hoping to kind of, you know, get a green line on some of these things and to see some, what the status will be. Add a mitigation as in like during construction, like the construction fencing project and things like that, or interim rec. Could you be just a little bit more specific? Yeah, I look, look interim rec. In, oh. interim rec. Yeah, so when the park is closed, where can people go to experience open space? Sure. And Alda, you're on, correct? Yes, I was just going to jump in. Hi, everyone. Perfect. Alda Chan from New York City Parks. Um, I think I had some of my colleagues were present at last month's meeting. Um, we're happy to give a, an update on, on some of the items. I think there's been some discussion about Waterside. I think folks are aware of some of the um, new turf that's supposed to be coming in um, that will be installed next spring. Um, definitely, yeah, we can, we can do a more formal presentation on that. Um, and just uh, while we're at it, um, Parks also recently revamped our own um, Parks uh, Esker website. Um, and we can make sure we have a link and we can share it with you tonight as well. It's www.nyc.gov slash parks slash Esker. And I mentioned that because um, there's actually a tool on our website that is an interactive map where um, you can choose by the type of recreational facility you're looking for. Um, you can look for, you know, basketball courts or uh, softball fields um, in the, the general Esker project vicinity. And that's one of the tools that we're launching so that folks know where to go if they're looking for parks that are open. Um, you know, right now it shows all the parks open since the Esker project hasn't yet started, but once um, the construction starts, we're gonna be coordinating with the DDC web team to make sure that our interactive map tool shows, you know, which parks are closed and where you can go. Um, so we're definitely happy to come back next month and give a more um, comprehensive update on um, that sort of recreation aspect of, of like what happens during construction. Great, thank you. Um, that's all I have. So uh, we'll go to we'll go to the committee members. Uh, we'll go with Sandy, and then we'll go with Larry. I I wondered if you had an update on Solar One. You mentioned that um, you're actually trying to accommodate that construction. I know we heard from them at our last meeting that um, they weren't sure of the timing of the construction. Do you have an update on that? Yeah, yeah, we had a meeting with. Uh... EDC and Solar One, uh, maybe it was two weeks ago now, and uh, just because there was some, they they didn't know exactly what was going on, and we told them that we're going to maintain uh, access to that building. Uh, we thought at the time when we put this contract together that this was going to be uh, two contractors in there at the same time. They'd be building a new facility. It doesn't appear that they're going to build the, the new facility in the near term, but it may happen down the road. So. That's the reason why we're building the wall first. And so we have spoken with Solar One, and we're gonna maintain access to their building um, from both the north and the south while we build the wall on the west side. And then just from the north uh, when Styco Park gets closed further south, right? So uh, we'll, we'll make sure that the, we accommodate Solar One's operation. Uh, they continue to stay in that building. And will you have to reroute um, the bike lane or any of the pedestrian passage in that area? Yeah, well, when, you park, when we close the park, yeah. Uh, no, for Solar One's, the, the wall adjacent to Solar One. Um, what, what about the wall? They won't, yeah, I mean, there'll be a wall there. I'm sorry, are you rerouting any of the existing, you know, the pedestrian way past the building? Um, I'm just wondering how much of that area gets closed down for the construction. We'll have to work that out with uh, with our contractor for their operations and uh, and with with Solar One because they have to be able to use that building and get to it uh, to continue operating. So, and, and I'm thinking more of the people who use the waterfront walkway and and the walkway there. Is that going to be closed or not? 
Well, the, the bikeway gets gets closed. Yeah. Where do they go? Yeah, where has that been rerouted to? I, I'm sorry. Did we not know? Like this was when they were doing the closure. Th this is what we were unhappy about. about whatever, like eight so months these, ago. Right, and these are the general mitigation efforts um, that that sort of my initial question was sort of alluding to. So. Um, yeah, so any sort of update. No, everybody has to go all the way over, like way, like off, like everybody, all bikes and pedestrians and come back up on like 21st Street, right? No, the current the current plan is is to reroute them to First Avenue, which is after all only a third of a mile or more. Yeah. It, uh, it means <laughs> yeah. Uh, down 23rd Street or 25th Street and then down there and then back to the river, uh, somewhere. I mean, I know that uh, CD3 has Avenue B being used as the uh, jogger and bike path, but that's only up to 14th Street. So we I mean, our at, part at, hasn't yeah. worked out. We don't have a, we don't have a plan. Adam, I'm sorry to jump in, but I just feel like we're asking questions about something that it's like there is no mitigation plan. Like the mitigation plan is First Avenue. And we kind of know that. Yeah. Um, we actually have a copy of the plan, but maybe you could explain a little bit more to us. Sandy, who was that? I'm sorry, that's a question for the EDC. Right. The DDC. Does anyone happen to have that with that, that they could share? Sorry, John, are you going? Are you? Which you plan? I'm sorry, sorry everyone. Sandy, could you repeat your question? I was having, I was, my connection was in and out. I couldn't hear you clearly. I, I'm sorry, I'm wondering if anyone can put up the plan for how to reroute around the, the Solar One construction site that you're going to start working on. How you're going to reroute bicyclists and pedestrians through that area. It will be rerouted. I don't know if we can answer that right now. We don't have our DOT colleagues on the line either, unfortunately. John, are you, do you think you'll be able to answer that or can we get back to Sandy and everybody else with more details? I think the, we would, I think we need to get back with more details, but what I would say is that when Asser Levy was, is being worked on and Solar One, the, the, the park itself is, the Stuyvesant Cove Park to the south and Murphy Brothers Playground will remain open. So those would still, they still, they still be utilized by the public um, for the first uh, o over, over a year. So exactly how people would get past that area, um, we'll have to work with our contractors while they build their, while they build the wall to maintain, because uh, there's basically pedestrians right along the waterfront and then the bikes a little interior to that, right? Um, but that that's not you know Astor Astor Levy is the first part we're working on and the wall next to uh, Solar One so uh, I would envision maintaining access but by the public through those areas by bike and by foot uh, until Stuyvesant Cove Park is closed which doesn't happen until over a year into the project. Right. That would be great if you could just share with us exactly how that's going to happen. As you can see, it's a big concern for us. Okay, understood. That. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, Larry, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, last week I attended a meeting of the Stuyvesant Cove Park Association, uh, which was attended by representatives from Solar One, and uh, they mentioned the, uh, the sequencing of the construction of the wall, but they also uh, pointed out that the, uh, the city, whether it was DDC or, uh, or another entity dealing with budget, has um, uh, put the brakes on their constructing their building, even though it's uh, uh, fully funded. And it didn't seem to make any sense to them. And I wanted to alert the community board to that, uh, that issue. And it's a particular concern, to, I think, to the community if uh, the construction on Solar One is delayed um, for a significant period after the retaining wall or the uh, flood wall that is uh, being erected next to it. Uh, has been completed. Uh, to uh, get Solar One completed and open up that whole area of the park as the work uh, proceeds down to the southern end of the park, 
I think is a, a very important imperative. And uh, the, um, the folks at the city who um, need to green light solar one uh, have, to, uh, have to understand that. I don't think they do. Um, on a lighter note, uh, the folks at Stuyvesant Cove Park Association very much want to put on uh, entertainment during the summer uh, in parts of the park where construction is not uh, scheduled for next summer. Um, maybe uh, toward 20th Street, uh, there's a little uh, area where it opens up. And so uh, please uh, be in touch with them and help to uh, facilitate that. Um, I don't have any other uh, uh, questions about uh, the uh, sequencing of the construction, but I do want to uh, ask you about uh, security and uh, whether you're going to have uh, cameras and the like uh, to prevent uh, theft in the laydown areas and also the, uh, the possibility that you might have um, uh, encampments uh, uh, growing up uh, as there currently is a homeless encampment at the uh, south entrance to uh, Stuyvesant Cove Park at Avenue C and East 18th Street. And, uh, and certainly uh, we want to discourage that uh, sort of uh, activity, which uh, could uh, be a, a hazard and also um, uh, present some uh, security issues. Yeah, so this is John again. We'll, uh, our contractor, uh, Perfetto Contracting, has noted that there are some squatters uh, living in the areas under the FDR drive. Um, and uh, in terms of security, once once we uh, uh, have, a, have a firm plan on which areas are going to be fenced off and worked inside, we'll have to talk to our contractor about security. I, we haven't specifically mentioned that we need cameras, but they're certainly going to want to safeguard any materials that they uh, bring on site to for installation as well as their equipment. So that's a good question. And we'll, we'll work with our contractor to address security concerns and, 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 and the homeless uh, people issue, I guess. Okay, circling back to the, uh, the first uh, issue, which involves the scheduling of construction of solar one, who can address that? Uh, I think that's more of a question for uh, EDC. Is, is there an EDC rep with the team tonight? No, I don't think so. It, it, it actually may be a DDC question. I think DDC is not going forward with many projects that were in design. Uh, I can I can speak to that a little bit, uh, not not too much, but just a little bit to my own knowledge. Uh, yes, there are, there's a large number of city projects uh, that. Uh, went on a temporary pause when when the pandemic started some of them resumed some of them uh, may be coming back soon as far as project funding approvals go the ddc is not an operating agency and we don't have authority or, or control over that we for any of anybody out there that really doesn't um, doesn't know our role we're we're essentially a client's rep to we're a representative to the city uh, as a whole to all these city agencies as the project managers for the city um, this Solar One um, project funding is an ongoing uh, discussion, and, and everybody on, on my side of this, the team at this and, and the city family, we all share the same concern, and we're 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 coordinating with City Hall, with our mayor, with our colleagues at the mayor's office, with our colleagues at EDC. Uh, last week, the week prior to that, this week, we're, we're, we have a lot of uh, discussions and coordination calls going on. So. Um, if I can just ask for everybody's patience and just hang tight, uh, I, we don't have any updates yet. I'll, I'll try to uh, get more information if I can, but uh, next month we'll come back. We'll be sure that our colleagues at EDC are, are here with us so we can um, jointly give everybody an update. But between now and then, I'm sure some, some more information would probably come up that we could share with you folks. I, do Sorry, wanna, I know that's uh, not very helpful, but just wanted to say it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, discussion and we all share the same concern. I, I do want to see if uh, you have any kind of a uh, reaction or a response to the, uh, the idea that uh, the sequencing of this project in terms of 
Um, currently, the south end of Stuyvesant Cove Park is uh, being uh, made available for uh, public use uh, with the idea that the construction will be completed, all aspects, including Solar One, uh, before uh, they have to close down the southern end. And if uh, that uh, remains uh, basically an open sore, uh, then none of the park will be available. And this, uh, I'd like to see if you have any uh, thoughts about how you might want to address that. Um, John, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we would have a moment. The, the park is phased. Uh, the Northern park yeah. with, with this area in solar one, uh, we need to get in there to essentially construct the wall, the flood wall um, in that area. And because this, the new solar one project is sort of in flux at the moment, not having a con confirmed or finalized project schedule uh, and the contractor uh, that just came on board, Perfetto, they've, uh, they've been doing their homework. They're kind of getting ahead of the game. And, so it, and the plan was to, to get them in and out of that area as quickly as they can. So that whole area would be available for the second project, for the Solar One project that, that, that that's will that's come right. up whenever that is. Yeah, Go ahead, John. I'm, I'm just looking to uh, see if anybody can advocate for um, getting uh, the whole ended so that this uh, entire northerly segment can be uh, completed as originally anticipated. Uh, to uh, make it available to the public for recreation use when the uh, southern half of the park John, goes were you speak to construction. That? What's that? Are you, were you going to speak? Yeah, I'm sorry, you, you look yeah, like you're I, I was. I, I think, uh, yeah. So the idea is that the uh, we thought that Solar One was going to build a structure uh, next to the existing one. So we wanted to complete the flood wall within the first year of construction so that they could finish their design and build their, build their building. Uh, as it stands, we're going to attempt to accommodate any utilities that might go through our wall. So that way they build their building whenever it is in the future, right? But to answer your question on what, whether that area would be available, um, it, it, it's, it, it's gonna become a construction site for a new building at some point, but I don't think we know when. Um, so trying to find that out, working with uh, you know, DDC and EDC working together, to try to coordinate that with the closures that are in this contract. We are, we're gonna close half of Stico Park at a time. So half will be available um, and, then, and then they flip to the other half, which is where the new park will be open. So it, it's a good question. The, the other question is how do we deal with all of the landscaping that's gonna happen around the solar one building if it stays and stays where it is? So when do, you, when do you do that? And then say, okay, we don't know when the new building is gonna come. So we wanna, we want to put in amenities in that area. So um, that's a good question. Um, in terms of uh, input on how we phase the park, we included suggested construction phasing, which is half the park at a time. But if there's a, if there's one half that we want to keep open, uh, you know, longer, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, we would, we would welcome input from the community because I don't know. I mean, I've walked the park. I don't know which part is the, the part you want to keep open longer or would rather have it finished first and opened. But we're at the point now where that, that discussion can take place because it's not dictated in the construction documents, but we are going to tell him do the north part first or the south part first. He's going to suggest something that we need to approve. So I don't know if, if there's an answer to that, but it's it makes sense to split it down the middle at 20th Street and, and, and do half of it at a time. So. Okay. Great, thank you, John. I think that's something we'll be discussing with you uh, in the near future. So um, we'll go ahead and take one last question from Anne and we're gonna have move the agenda. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Larry. So um, this is really just a follow-up because I had not realized that the, I knew the funding was there for the new building. I had not realized that the construction had been put on pause um, and the sequencing of this is so important. I have to say, I was trying to take notes on what you were saying about this. And I feel like there was no 
there, there, like there was no answer. And I think, you know, there's nobody here from EDC who has more control over this than probably any of us would really like. But I think it behooves us as a community board and as a committee to make sure that we do, that we really keep the pressure up to make sure that the construction and the sequencing remains the same so that we don't have a double hit on the very limited amount of open space that this community, and especially waterfront, that this community board has. So I, I hope that, you know, John and your, uh, you know, colleagues here are hearing us loud and clear that this is not something we just want you to come back, like come back next week, next month and tell us like, oh yeah, we're gonna have another answer on this next month. Like this is really important. So it more of a comment than a question I know, but I think I'm saying what everyone's thinking, right? Yeah. Uh, Adam, I, I just can I just clarify one Please. small piece of that, and uh, I just want to make sure everybody doesn't misinterpret what I what I was just saying earlier. That I was just saying as at, at DDC and our agency, a number of our projects went on a temporary pause. Not this project. Our construction is not on pause. We're moving forward as we had planned. The, as John mentioned, there was a suggested schedule, suggested phasing plan that now the contractor is reviewing and, and submitting their final um, plan to us for, for our approval. So all, everything is in motion and happening. I think that's the, with regards to the- No, Q, I, I, I do project. understand that. I'm, I'm talking more, I, I do understand that. I'm really referring more to the pause of the construction for the solar one building and oh, making sure that this sequencing is in place. And, and, and what I think the board and the committee need to do is really make sure that, you know, not just everybody here, but that the city knows that we don't like this, like this needs to keep moving forward. It can't, I know there's a lot of budget rejuggling now, but as Larry says, this is already paid for. We need to keep it on the right priorities. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure I, I figured that's what you were, you were saying, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure we're, we're on the same page. Sounds good. Molly, Molly has her hand raised. And after that, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and move the agenda to the next slide. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. So thank you, Anne, for, for restating that very clearly and Q and I, I, I hope that you're all talking with EDC. Is that correct? There is some coordination with Solar One, and you're ta everyone's yes. talking. Yes, on a weekly basis, almost three, four times a week. Yes, because definitely. like all city agencies and the elected officials, we we all need to be talking because exactly what Ann said, it needs to be, it's a priority, and it 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 you know it doesn't make sense to to have them be separate. And I know it's it, it's not a DDC issue. It sounds like it's more EDC and funding and those types of things, but it really is, you know, it just, it makes sense. Uh, they're urgently like kind of requesting our help and, and we, we want to help. So whatever we can do, but it, it just makes sense to coordinate those efforts and, and there is some urgency there. So. No, absolutely. And uh, we're approaching sort of the beginning of this construction phase, which means a lot of the details and information is becoming available almost on a daily basis. Um, uh, up until this moment, everything was proposed schedule, draft plan. And, and uh, as we move forward, our coordination will get tighter and tighter. Obviously, this is a much bigger group coordination effort with EDC, with our colleagues at City Hall and Mayor's Office, with Solar One uh, friends and colleagues. So there, there's a bigger group coordination that uh, we have been having with the city agencies uh, behind the scene. And now that we're moving forward into construction, it's it's going to get tighter as well. So now that we have more concrete information from the from the con contractor moving forward. Great. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you very much to the uh, Esker team for, for present for this presentation. Thank you for the answers. Thank you for your time. Um, if you guys, when you get a chance to send sort of the, uh, the bike riding mitigation, um, that would be great. Uh, we look forward to sort of seeing you guys next next month. Uh, we'll we'll be in close contact with the board to kind of help shape 
uh, what we're hoping to see as a committee um, for when you present to us in November. So with that, thank you. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to the third item, which is a discussion about the waterfront, you know, which Ann and Molly talked about, you know, it's a critical resource, you know, it's an under, that's goes without saying, you know, it's the land use and waterfront committee. Um, and so kind of pivoting from ESCR, you know, one of the big things that, you know, uh, we've sort of been championing here, Molly specifically, um, is sort of how do we activate our waterfront space? You know, there's a lot of it right now, you know, the, the one that comes to mind is the water club, uh, the, the Con Ed, the Con Ed pier, waterside pier, whatever, whatever we want to call it. Um, and other, other elements along that stretch, you know, that uh, receive heavy use. I'm not sure if you've been on it lately, but it seems like uh, pedestrian access, joggers, bikers, et cetera, is much higher than what it's been, you know, in years past. Again, this is anecdotal and also it's warmer outside than in years past. But still, this is a critical amenity for our community, a community that is starved for open space, you know, and sort of how do we sort of preserve that during the important escrow project, you know, and how do we expand upon it going forward? Um, and so earlier, earlier this week, I um, sent around some photos of a giant sinkhole that's sort of emerged in the uh, 34th Street exit off of the FDR. Um, Jean brought this to our attention, so did Molly, and I went out and saw it for myself. Uh, you could fit a, a golf cart, you know, it's, it's pretty sizable, and, it's, and there's been a significant sort of rerouting of the exit for, uh, through the water club. And what's interesting about this is that, you know, you see sort of just sort of the space that is just, what are, what are we doing here? Is there a better use for this space as opposed to sort of a, an empty parking lot um, for, uh, you know, is, is, there something, is there something better for that? And so with that said, you know, one of the things I just wanna kind of just, I don't wanna spend too much time on it, but I just kind of just wanna plant the seed for sort of future action with this committee. Um, as we start to think, you know, there are going to be critical investments along the waterfront in terms of what do we do? You know, how do we better prepare ourselves for resiliency efforts north of the ESCR? What happens to when the FDR reaches the end of its critical life? You know, based on the sinkhole and based on underneath um, the pass in between Glick and the, and the service road, it's already there. And so as governments start to sort of make those large, those large decisions, what can we do to advocate, you know, for bigger and better things that serve us instead of just potentially just the status quo? Because we're talking about billions of dollars of investment. Um, so sorry for the soliloquy, but um, Molly, did you want to add to that or speak speak to anything of this? Well, yeah, you know, I was actually just um, going to mention, I, I've mentioned this already to all of you, but October 28th, so next, so this Wednesday, it's already coming up so quickly. Wednesday evening at six o'clock, we're doing a, um, a meeting uh, led, sponsored by Rebuild by Design and, and led by that group, but it's the community boards, uh, six, three, two, two, I'm forgetting, four, one and four. Um, so it's the whole, you know, ESCR, LMCR group, and we've been talking monthly and, and what they want to just, uh, it's a really great presentation that Rebuild put together with the city. So the um, uh, Janie Bavishi from the mayor's office of resiliency will be speaking and, you know, showing the whole connectivity. But um, so they asked us to just talk about and I'll just, you know, be brief at this meeting. It's not talking that much but just lessons learned and I think our lesson learned is what we talked about just tonight on this call is a mitigation and and um, you know peds and bike mitigation but also park mitigation that they promised us, us you know and and they have this flyover bridge that we're, would be amazing if that actually happens it's apparently you know has a dollar amount uh, fund funding amount put to it already 50 million dollars or 53 million dollars um, but uh, when we're talking about our waterfront, it, you know, the ESCR stops at 24th Street. So uh, north of 24th, you know, I, I think some of the hospitals, I, I texted Sandra earlier just to kind of uh, remind myself that maybe someone here can say um, the Bellevue, do they have a resiliency plan in place? I know the VA hospital has these large walls that they've already put up. Um, NYU Langone is, you know, do they have a resiliency in place now, I think they do, um, but we have that sinkhole, Adam, but we also have three other sinkholes north. So they're you know, in a, a two, three block area of our waterfront, the infrastructure is crumbling. Um, so there, yeah, there are all these issues around our waterfront. Um, so ESCR and then 
again, again above 24th. So um, we just need to be cognizant of, of all these issues. And we need a master plan. We need something, a, a big idea. So we should really be um, starting to talk about that. I know we are, you know, um, with the water club, it's, it's a 10 year lease still for this abandoned restaurant on our waterfront. They have 10 more years with this EDC lease and it's just an empty building and parking lot. Um, thank, thank goodness it's there now. We have, uh, you know, there's rerouting of the <laughs> the exit, the FDR uh, traffic there, but uh, it, it's, it's we, we have a lot of challenges. So we need to really start thinking about what we want to see on our waterfront. So that's, that's all. There's so much more, but. Great, thank you, Molly. And again, to remind everybody, um, I believe Cody sent out the invite for uh, that that um, uh, discussion for Wednesday night. Um, so if you haven't signed up for it, I highly encourage you to do so. Molly is a panelist, but also it's a very interesting topic. And I think there's a lot of great lessons learned. Um, so um, we'll do Larry and then we'll do Ann. Larry. Bert, I, I just uh, drove by that um, problem area on the FDR Drive near uh, 34th Street in the, I uh, couldn't see what uh, the cause of it was. Does anybody know if it was a broken uh, sewer main or, uh, or what? DEP, I think Gene talked to them and I talked to them, the guys out there working on it. And they just said they were there trying to investigate. They, uh, they didn't give me a lot of information. That was Friday when I spoke with them. I don't know if Gene's or someone's talked to them since, but I know DOT and DEP are investigating. Um, and so, you know, I was just saying, open it up by end of day or tomorrow, get it open, you know, cause it's, it's quite dangerous what they've done with this rerouting, but um, you know, it's, it, it sounds like it's going to take several days or, you know, I don't know, but they're not telling us what the issue is. So as of today, I, I have not heard unless anyone else has, has heard it's, but it's DEP that's there on site, you know, I don't know, Gene, I don't know if he's, maybe, maybe he stepped, stepped stepped away for, yeah, for his I dinner. Think it's the, same, the same info that you had. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ann? Yeah. Um, I just want to say I, I joined this board because of my concerns about the waterfront access and like the fact that we are basically like the last part of Manhattan and much of the city to have access. And especially I live on 46th street. So it's even, <laughs> it's even, rough. and that makes me think about the UN. And I think in our big picture thinking, um, I know basically they have historically not been the best of neighbors, but I think if we're going to think big, we really need, need to think about how we might engage them. I mean, if we're thinking about past the FDR drive um, in a temporal sense, we really need to include them. And so I just want to throw that out. I, I think I'm going to be able to make it on Wednesday. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll chime in. Okay, well, thank you all. Um, so ideally, I think yeah, we can continue this discussion, but also, you know, to push further resolutions about specific items and also sort of, sort of continue a push for a broader master plan for this. So, you know, it's ongoing as always, and I'm really hoping that, you know, these sorts of seeds can, you know, blossom fruit, et cetera. So thank you for that. Um, so the second, that so in the last- Adam. Quarter, yeah, yeah, please. There's a, a, a member of the public with a question oh, uh, about uh, something ahead. that you, uh, do you want me to read it aloud? Oh, right, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, I think someone mentioned, oh yeah, that was me, the end, it reached the end of his natural life. Could you clarify, does that have a timeline? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, This. Uh, I apologize for the jargony stuff. You know, uh, this is sort of a, a thing like within planning or, or in um, engineering and whatnot is that, you know, a structure has, a useful life, let's call it 30 years, 50 years, et cetera. And then basically you either have to keep repairing it or replace it. And so after that sort of that, that period of time. So basically there are sub substantive construction uh, that is gonna have to take place at the FDR as it continues to sort of age. So that's, that's what that means. Sorry for that. I, I, we have a, a habit of urban planners, engineers, et cetera, being very jargony. So thank you for calling us out on that. So you know, we just have to speak Italian English sometimes. So um, 
All right. So the fourth item, again, this is just sort of um, this is sort of a, a, a broad sort of point. This is just a discussion of mandatory inclusionary housing in, in uh, Community District Six. Um, you know, Sandy Sandy brought this to our attention, um, and sort of having a kickoff of of like what does this mean here in the district? And so that sort of evolved um, in sort of discussing with the various chairs of you know how do we sort of coordinate our efforts um, with both housing and with the 197A, you know, um, from land use in terms of mandatory inclusionary housing, you know, the, the angle, the, the lens that, that I personally see is one of what does development look like in our district in the next six year, five years, and then sort of what uh, MIH is included within that. Um, specifically, a, a big topic that's gonna come up is the SOHO NOHO rezoning which um, there's a meeting occurring right now. Our DCP reps are there to engage in sort of the first, I think uh, one of the many uh, outreach efforts underneath like sort of, so that, that process is basically just starting. Um, and actually Kavitha uh, is there too, to sort of gather information for the committee. And so one of the big things, uh, you know, going forward is sort of how can we sort of coordinate our efforts and our resources amongst the committees to sort of tackle this very important issue I know there's a lot of overlap. I know there's a lot of people on this committee who are on the other committees. And so how can we all sort of, you know, uh, tackle this important issue um, uh, together, you know, basically. Um, Sandy, would you like to add anything to that? No, other than I was really hoping we could get some sort of a presentation on NYH because I know it is confusing and what potential sites there are in our community, because my understanding is it is always associated with a rezoning. Um, so we're going to try and gather some more information and make this one of the, it's just one way to achieve, um, you know, more, more housing in our district. So it's one of the tools and we'd like, I'd just like to know more about it. Okay. All right. And so with that, I think that concludes all of the items on the actual, on the agenda itself in terms of the bulleted items. Um, the chairs, let's see, yeah, MIH, all right, so the chair's report um, for, you've, you've, you've listened to sort of my soliloquies for the last two items, so I'll be brief here. Um, Molly uh, forwarded to us, um, the Grand Central Partnership uh, was advocating for the continued use of the Park Avenue malls north of Grand Central. And so this sort of piggybacks off of the presentation that was given to us last week in terms of the large Grand Central train shed that is uh, being reconstructed by a whole host of parties. And um, essentially they were advocating for sort of their continued use, but also their expansion, you know, which you might remember some presentations uh, from the uh, Midtown East rezoning, you know, several, several years ago where DOT posed some interesting and really cool uh, uses for the pedestrian malls, um, for, the, for the malls themselves and sort of how to activate them for the Park Avenue and for the city as a whole. Molly, did you want to speak to any of that? Oh, you're, yeah, there you go. Hi. Um, uh, no, not really. Uh, the Grand Central Partnership just asked if we would sign on um, to support a letter to support um, to send to DOT, and and I, you know, I, I think you were all in a uh, very positive about we want to support them. It's CB five. It's not in our our community board, but obviously it affects all of us. We'd have more open space, and it, you know, with all the their park plans for those islands are, are really quite beautiful. And then I know Adam, your big idea was like, and then maybe eventually someday south of 42nd street on in park avenue is, is cb6 so we could you know maybe envision um future uh something different how we would treat our our park avenue and our our uh islands in the middle there our mall what are their i guess they're called malls or i don't know he calls them malls but um yeah so i mean if we if i think if you're uh okay i we would just sign uh, sign on to the letter there's no need for a resolution just a a letter in support of uh, their plan. Right. Yeah. I mean, that works for me. Um, and that will, uh, uh, be one of the last, uh, letters of support, right? Like you'll get to sign. Yeah. 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 
that's yeah, it. I think that's, a, I think that's a good sort of a, a nice piece of a, to go out with a bang, if you will. So excellent. All right. Thank you, Molly. Um, so in terms of old new business, Larry, you brought up an item um, about the support of Solar One. Um, I think that that's a good idea. And I think maybe this is something we want to continue. Uh, we might want to explore in a resolution, you know, in, a, in a, another meeting. Um, well, I was I was going to uh, suggest that we do that now in light of the uh, timing on this project. And if there's uh, going to be a, a delay till next month, uh, that, that might be too late. Okay. Um, Molly, or do you have do you have more context in terms of uh, the meetings that occurred with EDC. No, but I'm glad that Cube did say they were coordinating with DD, EDC because EDC said, well, we need to talk to them. It was, it, and I think Chris Collins, um, I'm not sure his title, the executive director at uh, Solar One, he was, you know, alarmed that they were, they had kind of come, uh, you know, onto the site already and started doing work that, anyway, there was, there was some lack of communication in the, just in the last several weeks. So it sounds like they are all speaking now and, and maybe, you know, who, who knows, there are a lot of different uh, stakeholders. So, um, but yeah, Larry, I agree. We, we should probably do now, a I could, I could write, I could write a resolution uh, urging that the, um, that the hold that's been put on the construction of this uh, solar one project be, uh, be lifted and that uh, that go ahead as originally planned. And That's I think our, our, our ask is, is EDC is, is elected officials. I think there's some funding, there's some funding issues, not just a COVID pause. I think there's some, you know, it's, it's bigger than that. So there, uh, there are some issues, but it should happen all at the same time, right? It, the, the, this ESCR project should just move forward and reconfigure the whole park. And then, uh, you know, a year or two later, tear it down again and build the solar one. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, and particularly uh, in, in light of the fact that they're going to do all this landscaping, which will have to be destroyed in order to do the construction of the new building, it makes no sense. And I'm not entirely uh, sure, based upon the representations that Solar One made at the meeting last week, that there are substantive issues on the funding. Okay. All right. So, Larry, what would... Um what would a what would a resolution look like? You know, what do we want to? Uh, do well, I, I think um, it really is upon information and belief that, uh, uh, based upon representations of Solar One, and maybe I should reach out to Chris Collins to to just confirm uh, what I thought I heard. Uh, a, um, they have um, represented that they have full funding for the project. B, uh, they're supposed to uh, uh, build their um, new building in coordination with the construction of the, uh, the flood wall that uh, is um, accelerated to the beginning of the project. And C, uh, this would be for the good of the community because when uh, the northern end of the park can be returned to service uh, for the uh, uh, construction on the southern end, that there won't be uh, an open construction site uh, and those other issues about tearing up what had already been done uh, in the way of landscaping in order to facilitate a later construction of solar of the solar one building. Okay. Yep. And right. so I move that. And we support uh, the, uh, the, the the lifting of the um, of the of the temporary hold on uh, uh, construction. Okay, Lou, you're on mute. Lou, if you just we, hold down your space bar, you can unmute yourself for the duration. Sorry about that. Um, is there a possibility we could? Uh, is there a time pressure on this, or could we? Hold this till November and have Solar One come in and give us a fuller and more authoritative um, recitation. I personally am not opposed to that. My impression is that you know, in terms of the fact that the construction on the uh, the wall is going to begin, let's say in November, uh, that does not preclude Solar One coming in next month on. Uh, I could go either way, but I do think that if this isn't resolved, we ought to have a resolution. 
I Same think way. inviting Solar One to come to the November meeting and give it a full up to the minute recitation would probably be in the best interest of accuracy and completeness. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, Sandy. I was just going to say that I believe there is some redesign that will be going on um, to obtain the budget numbers that they're looking for. So it may be even more um, of a time issue. If they don't start immediately, it, it means they will lag behind. The there, I agree, Sandy, there is a big time issue. There, it, it can't wait a whole another month to, to come before mm -hmm. the board. Um, and I, <clears throat> there are some, you know, you, I, Larry, if you know Chris, um, he would be happy to talk, and I'm sure Councilmember Powers and his office are very aware of the issue. So maybe it's a call with you know Adam and um, the a few few folks on the committee and and those other stakeholders. It, it's there is an EDC and loop in EDC. Um, I don't know if there you can have another separate meeting with the committee or how that if you know if Lou wants to be involved. But I mean I think that yeah, there's definitely some urgency here. Not Till the, you can't really wait till the end of November. So, I guess I guess what we can do is, is that we can organize we can organize another meeting with Solar. We'll we'll will Solar One will obviously take the meeting. Will but will all the other parties be able to join in before they, before um, full board? I mean that's that's sort of the question, right? So are you suggesting that we have a special meeting of the committee with Solar One? I, uh, I think Larry, if you just talk, if you just talk to Chris Collins and uh, somebody right. from council member powers office, they'll have all the information. Um, but I, I didn't want to, uh, you know, if someone else on the committee wants to join, I mean, I don't want to complicate it, but it, you know, if you're looking to write a resolution, I think they have all the pieces and um, Will Fisher at EDC, I'm sure he would be happy to join. Um, okay. They're all very familiar with the issue and, and can, you know, edu educate you on that. Uh, I'm sorry, Sandy, did you want to speak and then uh, Ann? I'm sorry. I, I volunteer Larry to work with you on this because I think it's, it's a very, we have, we have to move it forward because it's not okay. going to happen instantaneously. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so we'll, uh, I think what we need to do is we need to um, have a second for the resolution and a vote. Right. I'll uh, second. And seconded. Okay. Is, um, so seconded. Uh, so all in, uh, I guess, all in support of Larry's resolution um, to advocate for uh, the improvement. Larry, could you could you properly phrase it? I know that there was a lot. I know the in short, it's support of Solar One, but what are sort of like the well in in, in support of uh, lifting the hold on uh, construction so that it may go forward uh, for the new Solar One building in coordination with the construction of the flood wall by DDC uh, as part of this East Side. Uh, uh, resiliency project All right so in support of lifting okay all right so um i think cody we should probably do a roll call of this we'll so we'll go ahead and do a roll call um and then i guess larry and i will will think about it I'm sorry. what if we just do a non uh, an a uh, objection if there's okay. an objection is, are, is there any objection to the resolution as proposed? Yes, I'm sorry, Lou. I'm going to abstain on this. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Seeing none, uh, resolution passes. Uh, uh, Jim Jim joined us late, so that's probably ten zero zero one, right, Cody? We've got eleven in favor, one. Of, oh no, sorry, you're right. Okay, I, I my math is bad. Right, All right. Uh, Larry, For the I, record, it was technical issues. It was yes, absolutely. All right. <laughs> uh, also, Jim, you you missed a compliment at the beginning, so. <laughs> uh, so good to good to have you. Um, it looks like there were technical there were technical intros. I'll be sure to catch it on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Um, so we will work on, uh, Larry, myself, and the board will work on crafting a resolution and we'll present that to you before full board. Um, and then also we'll work on, or the, the office and myself will work on to make sure that everybody gets the email with the invite before the next meeting. So um, with that said, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Um, yep, yep. Do, do you want to uh, just say that uh, a majority of the members responded to the doodle for the date for next month? Oh, right, yes, absolutely. So anyway, thank you all for responding to Cody's doodle. Um, uh, I, we, it, we're coming up to close to Thanksgiving. I know it's always really tricky. Um, and I think almost all the respondents, uh, except for maybe me, uh, so it was only a me problem, <laughs> uh, all vote in favor of keeping the next land use meeting for the 23rd. 23rd. Yes. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so again, thank you for that. Thank you, Cody. Um, so see you all. The so with that said, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Yep. Second. Excellent. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Uh, yes. And see some of you Wednesday. All right. Thanks. Good evening. Thanks, Adam. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs>